Hey everyone, uh, today is 4th of July. I've got some very exciting news to share with everyone. I've passed AWS certificate, uh, AWS Solutions Architect professional exam again after three years. So in other words, I got recertified as Certified Solutions Architect professional. Well, in this video, I'm just going to dive down into the background of this exam, how I prepared, how I felt during the exam, and the anxiety of waiting for the results to come out. All right, before we dive into the video, if you like videos like this, please do me a favor and hit the like button down below and don't forget to smash the subscribe button. I really appreciate that. Okay, now let's dive in. All right, without further ado, let me just show what it looks like within my AWS account. So. You go to, I think it's AWS uh, .training or something. After you log in, um, it shows this. It shows AWS training and certificate. There are multiple different tabs. What I wanted to show is all of the certificates that I've achieved um, in the past several years. Um, if you have, follow, have been following along with my YouTube channel, you can see that I published my first series of AWS certificate, um, how I passed them videos almost three years ago, actually, how time flies. As you can see, uh, when I passed my first exams, most of them um, started 2020, you see? I started March 2020, that's right around when the pandemic begins. Um, yeah, well, nothing to do with that, but it's just the timing. I picked up the easiest one, or the most foundational one, Certificate Cloud Practitioner. That's when I passed it at first attempt, 2020. And then I went on to climb a higher mountain, which is Solutions Architect Associate. Uh, where is that? Associate. It's certificate. Oh, I think, yeah, I took this one. Uh, oh, I, I took this one, uh, the second, which is March 13th, Solutions Architect Associate, SAA. Then I passed this one as well. And then I went on to take certified developer because um, I'm a software engineer. I thought it doesn't make sense if I don't pass this one. So I passed this one as well at first attempt. And then um, I, I got more ambitious. <laughs> so I've, then I thought I, I should be passing uh, solutions architect professional. Um, this, this just, uh, this is completely at a different level. I failed this one at first attempt, at second attempt, and also at third attempt, I think. I only passed this one after, at the fourth attempt. Um, so that's why you see there's a, such a long gap in between. I last passed the certified developer in April, and then I passed this one in September, almost half a year. So I failed, I studied more, I failed, I studied more, eventually I passed this. Um, so three years later, 2023, uh, most of them are up to um, recertify. So I got a few emails saying that uh, it's time for you to recertify. So, but this time I don't really have time to study for any of these exams. I just went on, I signed up, pay the exam fee and uh, get myself situated in the room and started uh, for that. So you can see the most recent one, uh, last day to recertify only this one. Oh, a few of them. Okay, so some other context. Uh, so S SAP, a Solutions Architect professional level is the highest of if you go through this developer or Solutions Architect route, which covers Solutions Architect Associate, Certified Developer. Oh, I don't think it covers Certified Developer. The other one is this. It basically covers three. So if you pass, if, if you just look at the last day to uh, recertify, it is this, right? 2026, 2026, 2026. So let me show you guys. Um, an hour ago, uh, I just want to record this video while everything is still very fresh in my memory. Um, these certificates are valid for three years. So like uh, I just passed them on the 2nd of last Sunday, uh, 2nd of July. I waited for two days, um, although it says five business days, it's just only one business today is a federal holiday. Um, so I got the result back. It's valid for three years. So next time, last day to recertify is three, almost three years from today. Okay, so this is the background. All right, uh, with the context, with the background out of the way, 
Now I want to talk about how I prepared for this exam. This is the second time that I passed a Solutions Architect professional exam. The first time was of course three years ago. Now it's time for me to recertify. How I prepared for this exam, the second time around, I didn't spend a lot of time. I basically had no time um, to prepare for this, but uh, the last day to recertify keeps um, haunting me. So I thought, okay, how about I'll just give it a try for the first time, um, like for the first time in the second, in the second round to recertify. Basically, I wanted to use this exam to help myself to get ramped up um, if there is anything that I'm missing or any knowledge um, that is um, evading me. So I thought, okay, I'll just uh, go um, sign up. So first, you need to take actions. You need to sign up for the exam, um, pay the exam fee get it up on your calendar so that you, you really take this very seriously. I could have let this one slip through without doing anything. I could say that I used to be certified, um, but uh, my certificate expired. I didn't renew it or recertify it. I could say that, well, I chose to just uh, recertify it. I don't know if I'm going to um, pass this. I really didn't know, but uh, I took actions. I thought, okay, I'll just uh, do it. I'll see if I fail, it's going to generate a, an exam report for me. I'm going to know in which field that I'm falling short so that I can study. I have a more emphasis or focus to study. There are like five areas. So they have five areas, uh, like five or four domains, four areas. So the first one is design solutions for organizational complexity. Second one is design for new solutions. Third one is continuous continuous improvement for existing solutions. Fourth one is accelerate workload migration and modernization. I thought even if I just fail this time, I, I'm going to know where I need more in-depth study in order to pass to get recertified for this exam again. With this mindset, I just sit through uh, the exam. Well, actually, before I talk about how I felt during the exam, um, I did actually spend like maybe 20 or 30 minutes to prepare for passing this exam for the second time, which is, uh, I think last time I used a website. I don't recall the name now, but this time I used a cloud guru. I just went through a, a practice exam or, or something. I failed that one for sure. I think there are like 15 questions in that practice exam. It's just a subset of testing for a specific domain of this solutions architect professional exam and I failed it. I got no more than half of the 12 or 15 questions correct and it crushed my confidence. And I thought, okay, there is no way I'm going to pass this exam if I know this little. Um, well, with that mindset, I just sit through the exam. I stepped in. I'll talk about how I felt during the exam. I signed up online just um, take the exam remotely. Um, I locked myself up in the very quiet private room. Well, so first, if you want to go the same route, or if you go to the exam test center, do it in person, you want to, you want to be there early. Of course, you don't want to be late. Being late, you might not be able to take your exam anyways. So you want to show up early. So the lesson that I learned is I took it on 2nd of July, which is on the Sunday afternoon. There were a lot of people in front of me um, so first, you want to make sure that your um, your testing environment is meeting their requirements. Otherwise, the proctor is not going to, going to let you take the exam anyways. And then second, um, after I tested my um, environment, everything is meeting their requirements. I was put into a queue, just an online queue, and it shows how many people are in the queue in front of you. It shows 12 people in front of me. That was really boring that at that point, time i already took off took off my watch my apple watch because the they'll check everything what you have on the desk all of your surroundings within your arms reach they will check and see uh, you just hold your laptop your webcam and let them see what's going on i took everything um off already i mean watch um iphone everything you just have your laptop in front of me there was a long waiting like 30 minutes waiting before the online proctor checked me in. And then, so the total length or duration of the exam was 190 minutes. So three hours and 10 minutes. That was really cruel. <laughs> um, with the mindset that 
I might not be able to pass it. So I wasn't super nervous about it. Before I stepped into this exam, um, before I threw away my iPhone and my Apple Watch, I texted my wife, I'm going to start the exam. And she immediately texted me back saying, come on, you are going to pass it. I didn't get a time to reply her because I think I'm not going to pass it anyways. But she she said, good luck. Um, well, I think uh, probably that helped. But I, I was really serious. I, I, I started the exam from the first question on very seriously. Um, I watched every, I read every statement because no words in each of the question, how the question is framed is a waste of their language. Each word means something. It might mean something about how you should pick the answers. It's multiple option, multiple choice questions. You sometimes have to pick one out of four or two out of five or three out of six options. So um, I took it very seriously from the first question. There is a total of 75 questions, by the way, and you are allotted 190 minutes, three hours and 10 minutes. I thought, okay, it's just, it's just going to be a test for my strength. If I'm able to just sit there for three hours watching your lab, can I do that? It's been a while since I've, since I do that. And because even in day-to-day -day work, your meetings is not going to last for three hours. Everybody needs to go to restroom, right? At least like a coffee break, bathroom break, right? But for this one, there is no scheduled break. I asked the online proctor before she released the exam saying, what if I want to go to the restroom? Then she said, there is no scheduled breaks. <laughs> then I asked her again, what if I really want to go to the restroom? <laughs> She said, okay, then you just wave your hand and we'll, we'll come here and we'll see you. <laughs> yeah, so that's, it's really a test. So you need to get yourself mentally and physically prepared. And you need to be well seated. You need to go to the bathroom. Like I went to the bathroom twice before I sit in the room because for three hours, you really cannot do anything. You cannot move. You need to have your webcam if you are in the, re in the remote location. You have to have your webcam being able to see your whole whole upper body, your arms, right? You cannot move around. So I thought, okay, it's just going to be a training, a test for myself. Then I endured it um, from the first question. I think after I knocked down half of them, like 34, 35 questions, I'm half, almost halfway through, right? 75 questions total. I had a feeling that I might be able to pass this exam this time. I don't need to take a, another exam to be recertified. Then I got a little bit excited. I feel like it's a marathon. Three hours is truly not something so easy. So that's how I felt uh, during the exam. Then I just kept myself focused pushing through, then down with the finish line. After I click submit the final question, there's still like 15 or 20 or 25 minutes. I don't recall exactly, but I have some time left over. I only flagged one question. Um, so there is a button in the exam that you can flag a question so that after you've gone through all of the questions, you can go back and review again for the flagged questions. I flagged only one. For the, for the most of them, I don't feel like I'm doing my best already. If I flag this one, come back like in 20, 30 minutes, I don't feel like I can make a better judgment for the question. So I flag only one. Finally, I was able to make it past the finish line. After I hit the submit button, there is like 12 questions. After you submit, <laughs> it's peers and view, the online proctor. They are collecting your feedback, how you feel about the exam, how is the exam being scheduled, how do you feel like anything that they can improve. I anxiously clicked through all of them and then just eager to see the final result. Just give me the result, pass or fail. You meet. That's what happened to me three years ago. But now I think they changed uh, the process. They changed it. I didn't get to see the results immediately. I thought I, I must have missed it. But then I got an email seeing that your results will be validated and available to you within five business days. So I took it on second day of July, it was a Sunday, and Monday, which is yesterday, today, 4th of July is a federal holiday. I was expecting sometime by the, this Friday, I should be able to see it. 
Today, luckily, just an hour ago, I was able to see the result. It was more than 24 hours of anxious waiting.、Uh, finally, I was able to see it. Sorry for rambling through all of this. All that I can say is. Um, you need to take actions. Solutions Architect Professional Exam. It's a truly an exam that's going to test your mental, your physical strength, and of course all of your experiences, all of your expertise, your hands-on day-to-day operation、um, experiences with AWS. If you have more time to prepare, I would、uh, definitely go with a lot of hands-on labs. There are a lot of labs online, like a Cloud Guru. Or quickie labs,、uh, play around with it. Your experiences really mean a lot because a lot of things you need to have hands-on experiences to understand what they are asking about, to understand what each term means for that specific context. Yeah, so that's what I would say.、Uh, this time around, I feel much more、um, competent or comfortable with everything.、Um, and also, one last thing which is very important: don't feel. Frustrated if you take a practice exam from a cloud guru or any other exam prep centers, don't feel discouraged or don't feel frustrated. The actual exam might be quite different, even if the、uh, practice exam provided by AWS itself. I think I took one not this time, like a couple years ago, the AWS official practice exam. I failed more than half of it, but it's just、uh, through this trial and error that's how you learn. That at least that's how I learn. If you hit something, if you make a mistake, if you got this question wrong, that means you are learning something new, right? If you ace through all of them, that means you didn't learn anything new, or you are just awesome. You are you are already a, an expert in this field already. That's perfect. You're done. But if you failed this practice exam or any practice exam, Don't feel discouraged. That's just part of the learning process. If you failed this question, that means you didn't know this domain, this area, good enough to pass. That's where. That's how you are able to grow yourself. That's very important. Don't feel discouraged. Just be confident in yourself and hang in there. You'll make it through the finish line as well. So that's all about it. All that I can think of to share. So good luck with your endeavors with either AWS certificates or Google Cloud certificates or whatever it is. Good luck with the endeavor. It's well worth it. Thank you so much for subscribing. I wish you a very nice day.